Okay, got anything here this morning right off? I have nothing. I have this resolution reestablishing the 911 or the 75 cent line charge for the 911. Okay. We have to redo that every year. Same rate. Yes, 75 cents. Now we have resolution 2007 14. Establish 75 cents for 911. Uh, I make a motion to approve that resolution. Second. We move second to approve this resolution. All in favor say aye. 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 We'll recess till somebody comes in, man. to close it knowing that it would never go back up because I was told that it would never go back up if I closed it but with the tornadoes we were we thought you know you got to do something got to protect the records so anyway it's down and I can't get it back up it's totally broke the other one does work the one on the left side so I called around to about four places to see if anybody would work on these or we can replace these and I only got one response from Kansas doors and they gave me a proposal on replacing the two in my vault. Now granted, I don't need to replace both of them, but I, I thought if I'm going to replace one, might as well replace the other because it's as old too. And this was the, should have made copies for everybody. That was their proposal for replacing them with, it's not going to be the exact same thing, it's a steel shutter with wind locks for basically for weather. It's not a fireproof one because they kind of gave me the idea, and I understand this, fire doesn't come from the outside. It's going to come from the inside. So he always, he wondered why there was even fireproof shutters on the windows to begin with, but I said, you know, when they built the building, who knows what they were doing. Um, but this has wind locks. The way I understand it, it's got these little fingers that when the wind starts picking up, they'll jiggle. and lock into place so that it can't go up or down. And that's to replace the two in my vault. This is for third floor. When the, when the vault, those vault um, window shields were installed, they were not installed correctly. And you can't pull them clear down and slide the locks out so that you could put a collar pin to keep them from going up in case there was lots of motion. Um, Mary Gatton, they're for her. They're for her vault. She couldn't be here this morning, and so I told her that I would come in and present this. This is just to have work done on the floor in her vault. It is not replacement. They're all working mm -hmm. fine, but there needs to be some little slots uh, drilled into those so that those. So lock. Yeah, they'll lock, and that is the same company, <laughs> and that is their projection for doing that work. And I was going to see if you guys want to come in and see what I'm talking about because okay. they're they're hard to explain and I didn't even know a name for them for a long time. I just call them the Iron Curtains. Mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> well, that's kind of what they are. <laughs> yeah. So I thought if you guys want to come in and see what we're talking about, then you get a better idea of of what you know okay. what needs to be done. So. Well, we. Something has to be done. Isn't it? We need, we need to... Well, I've got the records from 1879 mm -hmm. in my vault, and basically, if the windows blew out, they could be damaged or totally lost. 
Now, granted, I do have everything on my book film in the salt mines, but, you know, there's a lot of value to the old books and keeping them safe, so. But only one company responded? Only one company responded. A company out of Hayes thought it was too far to drive here. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Business must be good. That's what I thought. And I could ask around some more, but there's very few people that even know what I'm talking about when I call them and let alone work on, do this type of thing. You want to take a look at it? Yeah, okay. Here we can. We'll, we'll recess. Or in Kansas City. So, uh, okay. No, go into recess. Open session. Let's recess. Let's open and then recess. Okay, I just wanted you to know I did have some repairs done to the health department, which you're probably going to see there. And one of them was some plumbing problems, and it was like a lot more than I thought it was going to be. So I quizzed my plumber. That must be my son in law. And apparently, it's correct. $400 was a lot. What did you do? Well, they fixed the, the ductwork in the air conditioner because one room was hot, and they put a new faucet on in one room, and they fixed two other faucets. So if you see a different date on the top, because I held on to it uh, so I could ask them, but apparently it's correct. Got my car port fixed. Good. Doesn't do white drops anymore. They're sticky clear drops. Oh, does it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. What? From oh, the paint? Uh-huh. Condenses on there still and drips down, but they're not white. They're sticky and clear. So I still have some money in a reserve fund. If I could buy a little covered car for it like they have out of the MS, I would really like to do that. I tried. If I really do that. Yeah, she's that leaving on it for a shade or something. Like yeah, I'll leave it on there. Better, but put you something else Yeah, because I had a horse for him at my meeting the other day. I, we take turns driving in our region. Yeah. And it was my turn to drive. I had a horse for him. You can't really see it on the, except for, the, you know, it runs down the nest. It looks better. <laughs> it still drives me crazy. Told you I was going to. Oh, I know what the third thing was. I have to spend day on pandemic flu money. If you don't spend it, you got to give back. Well, Barton County got permission to buy cots for a medical facility that if they were used for a medical facility, it fits the grant criteria. Because in the tornado, you know where our cots came from? If we would have had a uh, Tennessee. Really? Yeah. Because Kansas was depleted. Hmm. So I'm going to be looking at costs to buy, see how many I can um, afford with what I've got. And then the lodge told me they match one for one, whatever we bought, and they will like, make a place to store them. Well, they'll make a place to store them. And they're also going to put a generator on that building. So if we need to use it for a facility that's mm -hmm. ready. That's great. So uh, we need to look at what's in those accounts, you know, and move over. Yes. Move over what I've used for um, salaries and then spend in this before August 31st. I don't have to like $1,200 in my file of terrorism, but the pan blue money, I think I have to have spent what I need to. Mm -hmm. So if Park County can do that, <coughs> well, we'll be sure. look at it. We can't wait for Tennessee. To, right. Tennessee costs to get it. No. That's a long way to come. I mean, they're there. Friday night, I think they were there by one of them out there Saturday. And they showed up with them, so they drove all night with them, Red Cross. But I think it would be who is to have our own, too, but I'm sure we have something. Well, and, and you know, if we don't use them, there's some other county. Yeah, that's right. And that's what I've told them about. Our, we have that little generator, you know, we've got to bring our generator over and we can use it. And anything we got. What we're here for is to share. That's yep. why we have our coalition. So when you come up on that plumbing bill, oh my gosh, what did you have that? <laughs> on, on, uh, on those carports, they're, they're probably less than $1,000. Yeah, you can get for like $6.45. Yeah. 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 Somebody here selling these or buying them? I think um, maybe. Um, this is Glissy. Glissy's yeah, got some. Yeah. I 
Uh, but you just want to get it. I think we put like 15000 in reserve, and I used a little bit of something for, for coffee or something like that. It's been in there a long time. I think time. more than a lot of different to have the thing completely closed, you know, makes a lot of yeah. too that it just hasn't grew up over that way you don't have yeah. long areas or so. Right, right. So I'll what check what with Carl Anderson. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carl. Oh, I will. Is he here? Okay. Okay. I think that's everything I told me not to get sunk because I didn't write it down. <laughs> so I don't write it down. I don't write it down anymore. <laughs> At that point already? Yes. <laughs> Carl's in Ellsworth, maybe back. Here, Wednesday. Okay, other than that, we are really, really busy. We have our family planning on it. I have a whole page of things to make them happy. We have our, well, we have our wig on it. There's a couple of things we need to do it. And then Thursday, we're having our organization on it. should not be a problem. And all the school physicals. We have a trouble getting vaccine. Chicken box. Because mm -hmm. of the new recommendation that they get a second one when they go to kindergarten or first grade. There's a big shortage. And it takes forever to get it. Some of the kids we go to school with them. So they get the first one is at, at one year. One year and then boost and five. requirement to get more first Can't seem to get it very fast. So. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks, George. <coughs> Anything else for right now? We're recessed. satisfaction so we will be going to get it shortly the question for me now is where where am I going to put it or if I put it in Maxville where am I going to put the one we take out of Maxville so that's what we're working on and uh, we don't have we don't have a we don't have any space left in the fire station in our put so if anybody thinks of anything all ears because right now I'm not sure what I'm mean. doing. I don't really want to sit outside, mm -hmm. you know, if it comes mm -hmm. down to it, we will for a little while. But I'll still be able to be a while to put anything out there that they used to, they we used used to, to be able to share Stafford at the no, at the St. John Hospital. Oh, that's right, it was out here. Right? Well, they, uh, yeah, the garage space, yeah, back or something. Yeah, there was some garage yeah. out there where they used that's to That's where we used to keep it, where it was kept for where you got the other one. See, that's why, that's why I came here. That's one thing off your list. One thing off my list. I'm not sure if they made it. You know, whether they put it something might be full. I don't know. But that's for that. Yeah. 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 Given our circumstances currently, if it weren't for the time frame, uh, not really lining up, I'd probably be, I'd be a lot more enthusiastic. But basically what it is, uh, it's, it's basically a grant for, it falls in, it's called the SAFER Act, and it falls into two different categories. One is the hiring of additional personnel, which is something that we are, that we're looking at, and it's something I had hinted at before about when we hire people, why one of their job components, will, there will be firefighting uh, things in their job description because it's a grant. To, it's a grant to hire firefighters. But it says in the it says in the wording of the grant that as long as they're trained to be used as firefighters, 
you can use it for whatever else. Uh, it's it's the thing that a lot of departments use to hire people, but it's not a it's not perpetual. It's 100% the first year, and it, it stages down. Where by the end of the at the end of the fifth year, the entity hiring the people takes it over. But it's, so it's basically 100, 0, 80, 20, 60, 40, and it goes on down. Uh, I'm going to do a little more checking on it. We may be able to use that to fund upcoming positions. The problem is, is i got to really look into the timeline on it. Uh, if it's a deal where we apply now and we're not awarded until next, next year, mm -hmm. August, it's not going to help. Uh, but we're going to do some checking. The other half of it that, that we probably will, will apply for, as long as that's all right with you all, is the, uh, the volunteer recruitment and retention half. The other half is made for volunteer fire departments. And it's essentially what it says. There's a study that you uh, survey basically filled out by your fire department, and they find out uh, what what people think, uh, what the members of the department feel would make them more likely to to continue to volunteer, uh, what they feel would help you to recruit more volunteers, and uh, it's really wide ranging what you can spend that money on. There's a department outside of Oklahoma City that built a, with entirely with grant money, that built a, basically built a gym and a, and a swimming pool thing. It's kind of like the lodge over here. And they, but they did it off that grant because enough of their firefighters on the survey said that if there was somewhere for them to work out and stay in shape and enjoy some recreation that they think that would get people on the fire department. So they got money to do it. Uh, there's certain things that it won't cover, like salaries or buildings or anything like that, as far as like stored and fire equipment. But um, we're going to check into it and see if there's something there for our volunteers. Next, um, two EMS volunteers, Dwight and Michelle Houston, uh, both resigned from the uh, volunteer uh, roster of the ambulance services last week. And so uh, we, I just wanted to. Let y'all know that, and basically to publicly thank them for their their time that they serve. Uh, next thing on the list, there uh, there's a competitive process every year in the state to apply for uh, fire schools, is what they call them. And once a month, the Kansas State Firefighter Association goes somewhere in the state and puts on a weekend worth of fire training but no cost to the fire department it's in the area. And uh, we applied for that and we were accepted. And so February 9th and 10th, we will be hosting uh, the state fire school here inside our county at a place yet to be determined. And nobody has any questions about any of that. Uh, you're so inclined, I'd like to talk to y'all for about 20 minutes in an executive session for non-elected personnel. I'll make sure we have 20 minute executive session for non-elected personnel. Second. Be moved and second have 20 minute executive session for non-elected personnel. All in favor say aye. 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 Trying to forward it. Get a paramedic unsuccessfully. I just changed the Change a little of the wording in there for the EMT job description, took out the ALS requirements, and I kind of separated it out. So basically, what I handed you is the job description for the position of EMT, and then the second one is the job description for a paramedic. No. And they're very similar to the one that was approved before. Uh, obviously, for the EMT, when I took out the mention of the supervisory responsibilities, uh, as you'll recall, the job description from several months ago said paramedic supervisor uh, and, and uh, we still have that uh, if we are so inclined to go that route but I kind of wanted there to be a job description on the table for what we're trying to do right now which is not necessarily to, to bring in a, so much of, an, of another supervisor or anything it's just, like I said we're just trying to bring in a couple workhorses so I um, yeah, it, and it says in here, I just didn't, I didn't change that. 
there, that is a typo in the fourth line of the one for paramedic where it says the status of exempt. If you read in the summary, it, it got changed to non-exempt. It's just an oversight on my part, so it should be non-exempt. They both should be non-exempt. program is 140 hours. It's basically uh, it's basically one college semester. Um, after that, you can take your EMT intermediate, which is kind of the mid-level. Uh, those folks basically, well, let me back up, but EMT only, basically only does, you can think of it like external interventions. They put oxygen on somebody, they can use an AED, an automatic defibrillator. Um, but it's all external bandages, splinting, stuff like that. Uh, an intermediate can start IVs, and in Kansas, an intermediate can uh, can intubate, basically establish a, a tracheal airway. Uh, they can give a couple medications. Uh, the training is is uh, about 140 hours. It's about as long as the EMT course, uh, and then the training for paramedic. Uh, is, is a huge step up, and it's uh, paramedic is a two-year program with prerequisites ahead of time. Uh, it's basically it takes just as much time to do that as it does to do the two-year RN program. The hours and education are about the same for that. Uh, I think it runs about 2,000 hours. medications that that are directly covered in the paramedic program but the way it actually the way it is in Kansas um, in Kansas a paramedic can do anything within reason that their medical director feels that they should be allowed to do a paramedic in and I I'm not, I'm not comparing the training of a paramedic to that of a physician's assistant or nurse practitioner or one of the mid-levels. I'm not comparing the training of that, but the, the scope and the autonomy within that scope is much similar to that, um, where the paramedic can do, like I said, within a reasonable standard of care. If, if you start cutting people open in the back of the ambulance, you know, obviously a lawyer's gonna have fun with that. But within reason, uh, paramedic can perform any intervention that their medical director feels feels comfortable with and it really depends on the training level of, of that paramedic I mean it's just like nursing or anything else once you finish that uh, that initial course it's, it's kind of up to the individual person what kind of critical care mm -hmm. training that they want to what kind of road they want to go down and I mean I like with me I, I've had much additional critical care training because that was what I wanted to do and so there's what I do here may be a little bit expanded from what a paramedic in Wichita does. It's ten minutes from a hospital, so it it's uh, it's really it's really a pretty neat system. Okay. I didn't mean to. I just get really into yeah. that stuff. So. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. And then. Uh, 
put the I didn't put the rain the rain light man on there. But I think these are self explanatory. I guess I'll give each you one y'all can bring it out. With the presentation of my crew captains here, basically crew captains are compensated at uh, $205 a month to be the crew captain, which involves basically coordinating the schedule and the crews, making sure that the shifts get covered, uh, things like that. And then they're paid $100 a month for the maintenance of the facilities. Uh, previously, from the records of the EMS office. Before these two became the crew captains, Lori Scott was paid $900 a month to take care of the cleaning responsibilities regarding the ambulance, the bays, the laundry, things like that. And uh, with their resignation, she offered to pick that back up at the same rate. And uh, so that's what I'm, I'm recommending we let her do that. And then for the month of August, uh, duties of the crew captain are going to be split between the other two people that are referenced on those papers there. And so, I, I mean, I'd just like to take the, the crew captain pay progress and just split it between the two of them, because uh, since they're going to split the responsibilities. And this is, uh, this is all on a, on a temporary basis. I think, by, I think by September 1st, we should have a, a pretty good direction on if we are or aren't going to fill that spot. But I think for the month right now, and I need to go ahead and let some people do that work and go ahead and compensate. So you're people. saying like these three people, hundred dollars a month extra, is that right? Yeah, that's basically what they're getting. I think it works. It did for the two that are doing the crew captain duties. I think technically it worked out to one hundred two fifty. Need to be prorated from the fifth through the thirtieth. So you actually just take do it away with one and replace yeah, with these. I'm just switching it up now. Uh, so, and they're but they're not going to assume those duties on a permanent basis. I think we're I think the first of the month we're, we'll revisit this, and I should have a real clear picture by then based on who all is applied for the positions, what we're going to do. Do we need to take any action on that? No, I'll make the motion that we go ahead and um, institute the recommendation on salary increases that Jason has. Recommended for uh, Larry Scott, Dina Williamson, and Angie Long. Uh, second motion. We move second. We go ahead and allow these changes. All in favor say aye. 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 I guess I need to sign. That's all I have. If anybody has any questions. Thank you, Jason. Can I have just about two minutes here before we start this? Sure. Can we recess for a minute? Can we recess? From 10.7G to 10.8H, which you put in at the top on the scale there. How many years there? Uh, 10 of them. Robert does an excellent job, so I recommend that you. I know you just didn't question that when you vote him on, but I, I, I apologize for him saying it. Because he is doing an excellent job. Okay, I'll make the motion we raise Robert first. Increase it from range 107G to 108H a month. Second. We move second to take these changes on Robert Murrow. All in favor say aye. 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 That's all I have, unless you guys have something. Um, the annex building, have you gotten any recommendation and stuff for your... In the office space-wise? Yes. Yeah, I've already got, or, uh, 
sketch or whatever. I've got the measurements of where I want things. Um, I tried to get a hold of Mike Needens last week and he didn't call me back. But I wondered if I could get him to come down, he'd probably do it for free, I'm sure, but come down to, and show him because he's, I mean, he, I don't know if we'd hire him, but he is a contractor and does that kind of work. And I wanted to see if he'd come look at it, just see if what I've got can work or not. Because, I mean, I'm not a carpenter, but I don't think, other than the wall, the, the two walls for the church part was that run north and south probably are the only two actual walls that you couldn't replace, I would think. I mean, I don't think the ones really in east and west would be supporting the wall. Have we gotten a letter back from... <clears throat> now the one backed out, right? The, uh, yes. Uh, the guy from Slime. Yeah. So the Garden City one is the other heard one. What about the city? Did you talk to the owner? Yes, uh, the council said they didn't want anything to do with it. So at this time. Oh. But as far as the the holding cells and all that. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have I've got it from the. Who has to state that mandated or? Well. Right. That's, that's what they have to have to be approved for state. Right. But as far as the holding cell itself, I don't see any way we're going to be able to do it other than having actual, I mean, there are architects that do prisons, jails, mm -hmm. and I might have to have somebody like that do it or it probably won't be able to snap. But the rest of it, I mean, just the office space, we don't have to do that. But, um, the problem is that the people that build those jails, they're not cheap. <laughs> I mean, they're going to be a little higher than... The than chain link fans. Uh, exactly. Who actually comes out and inspects and gives an approval? Out to Pika somewhere, or who does that, you know? Well, maybe. Actually, I don't think it's state anymore. Uh, when we close the holding cells downstairs, whenever that was, 90s, early 90s. Um, the people that used to come inspect those from the state, they dismantled that. They don't even have it. So I'm sure it's federal. It's, yeah, I've been out of it so long, I don't... Well, but I guess my question would be if you could find out, maybe they have some ideas, recommendation, who, what it takes, and maybe they got some plans well, or something well, like that. Well, probably be easy to the guy go to them, but then you know you're doing right there. Yeah. Then the guy from Garden City has those names. Yeah, he has, I was going to say, he, he, like, has he knew what was. Yeah. So we haven't heard anything from him since and he was here. And I think the next step is to find a structural engineer or something to get up there and poke around and find out where the supporting. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I would think my means would be able to do that. I mean, build homes. But. And I just caught him because I know him. But it's going to take somebody to get up in the ceiling and mm -hmm. look around to see where, if it's a continuous span. Right. He's not in this part. My brother in law's contract with him if he, if Mike didn't want to do it. Well, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care who, who does it. I just. Well, we got mm -hmm. people here locally give some plans, and yeah. now we got. You could surely get a hold of your brother one day. That'd be great. I mean, that way we can at least find out. Yeah. We'll see if I can get a hold of him see. Yeah. Because there's no plans of that. You've got to use all you've got just four plans sketched out. Right. Right. See if they can fit All we found in the church was what their plan is, what they were going to do with it. But there's no blueprints of the building itself. Right. So do some investigating and get because I think once we do that, once we find the support beams and so on and so forth, then the guy from Garden City, if we ever hear from him, you know, can 
can start the preliminary sketch. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Get moving on that. All right. Okay. Thank thanks, you. Jeff. Thank you. Anybody got anything new right now? We'll recess. Basically takes a shovel off of an apron out of it. These other two, the ones from PB here, are have an apron on them. Feeds the purpose, it? Yeah, I mean it's just a stopgap deal to fill the whole uh, winters there. So it just really kind of makes double the work for you. So actually, you, just, you can go ahead and patch this and be done when you get done with it. Then you're safe. Yes, but it just throws a bunch Yeah, of yeah, it, it takes a mix that we have now and he kind of heats it, puts the radiant heat in it, and, uh, and that's why we basically we went with the Bowman deal because a lot of times I mean they would set up and be just fine. So which one do you think's the best? Probably the HD. The one from Jacksonville, Texas. And then well before we went, he did they told me he told me he, he just called me before I walked in and said that they had a night 2002 GMC that they had used for demos. It's just like this, and now, and now it's been done to demonstrate. And he said that we could have that unit for about 88. And he just called me on the phone before I walked in. Get to say the truck. whole unit, the truck, the truck, everything, everything for 88,000. Yeah. And then the other one is was 58,000 without a truck. Well, this is this a new truck you talking about, aren't you? The one you had to demo? What was it? No, it's on a 2002. I mean, but what was a new truck you put it under? But yeah, it was a brand new truck when they put it on there. So probably didn't have big miles on it. He said all the miles are highway. They they've taken it to California and did five, five or six demonstrations. He oh. tell me, and when they they bring it back and they sit for two months and then they line some more up like down to so the they drive all over the country then for a demonstrating purpose. Yeah. yeah. So basically it's a lot of highway miles. Of the miles you say? He did not know. They say the other one was thirty eight. The the truck the truck would just be thirty eight three by itself. Plus the fifty eight. Yeah. And that was, is this a used unit? That's a used truck. That's a 04 Ford, is that right? Mm -hmm. How much it is? It's $38,300. Mm -hmm. 
This was already set up. That was already set up. Ready to go. And how much you want to pay for that? And you said, he said eighty and eight for the one that's they're, they're calling a demo unit. You know. And the fifty eight for just a unit and plus the truck you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. That'd be ninety six hundred, ninety six thousand, right? Mm -hmm. That's the way I had it. Will we take less? No. Work on it a little bit. They're supposed to send me some pictures of it tomorrow. Well, maybe what? Hold off to see what it looks like and put the models and everything on. Yeah. And, uh, might come out to the lot. Didn't they want a setup charge on that one, the 58? This one? Setup charge. Was there a setup charge on this? Was there? No, there was a training charge on this front from HD. It was about $1,800. This is three days of training. What about this here? This mounting on factory, mounting at factory on truck supply view twenty seven hundred. Total price sixty four. Less discount of sixty four makes it fifty eight. This one's all electric heated. It's got a generator on it, and then it's got electrical circuits. Through it. The one from HD is electric at night, or you plug it into a two twenty source, and then mm -hmm. propane. The day, propane. What's what, what, what's the best one? Propane heated factor electric fuel? I honestly don't know. It's price of propane. Yeah, yeah. propane's hot too. But that's got its own generator on it then. So yeah, it's got a yeah. I think we ought to pursue that one. I do too. To see what if he gives a discount. Yeah, I asked what the bottom dollar on the bottom. Okay, this is 2002. Where the other it was an 04. It was an 04 yeah. Ford. Yeah. And then, well, from HD Industries, he's telling me 120 days out, which is four months. Well, right now it's, it's August, so we're talking about December, and I'm sure we're going to need to patch before then. And then we probably could get some money back out. And I suppose we'll, we're going to have to put that old five yarder we have and put it on sealed bids. So Whenever we get the truck, I mean, we won't have any use for it too. That's a gasoline motor that my mom seems to want. They just didn't want to mix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well Troy might well, think thanks. it's pretty good unit compared to the, I mean, well, it's better to than Fincher yeah. does. Yeah. It makes sense to me okay. if, if, if one's me already... Too. Yeah, he's still sending me some pictures. Sure. So I'll, I'll let you all have everything, how, how much they use and bottom dollar prize on it. Okay, tell me. I'll work on it. Tell me I'm going to stop there at that price. We're going to put something else. Okay. You would have, have the whole thing already to ready to go then, too. Yeah. And yeah. Well, then we don't have this. And it's just for demonstrate purposes. We couldn't run too much through it then, I doubt. Well, that way we'd have a better idea of the miles. And well, and if you bought another truck, took it up there, they'd probably have to revamp it to get it, the thing to fit on it, so it'd be more... Mm -hmm. Well, they'll, they'll tell you what you have to have. Yeah. Axle the cab and, yeah. and whatnot. And, yeah, and then to see if there's any revamping, you have to have it done. And they won't even start on the units until they have them there. So. Sound like a deal. I think and there's a couple of prices in this, and they said, and I'll call them and see what they think of this. So. Okay. Other than that, have a wonderful, cool day. Yeah. You too. <laughs> you don't want to know what that black stuff was last week. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's terrible. Shot the temperature gun is 142 watts. You're right, it's laying out nice. And we should be going to South of Maxfield on Wednesday. Yeah? Okay, now. How do I do that? We should just be able to put it on the speaker and just.
Does he even think I can see over right now? Because he can't show it on the phone.
entertain a motion to adjourn. Hold it. We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>